Record better audio anywhere with Motive Digital Microphones from Shure. Easy-to-use options like the MV88 plug directly into your phone or computer and include a free app. Create studio-quality sound for podcasts, music, and videos. Visit Shure.com to learn more. Blog Talk Radio. Uh, you know what time it is. Time to hang out yeah. with Mr. Cool. With Mr. Kuba, with Mr. Kuba, with Mr. Kuba, get the latest cool from Mr. Kuba, from Mr. Kuba, from Mr. Kuba, hey, with Mr. Kuba, 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 Welcome to the Bit Scoop with Coop. I'm your host, Coop. And guys, hope everybody's having a great day today. Season four is still going strong, guys. Make sure you go to the bitscoopwithcoop.com to check out episodes from season one all the way up to now. Make sure you check out my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash the Bit Scoop with Coop. Um, Instagram and Twitter, same thing. Well, actually, it's at MCOOP317. But guys, that's enough about me. My guest today has been doing big things in the movie industry, from being a filmmaker, director, writer, you name it. This guy has done it in this industry. He's seen it, and he's done it. Also has a hit film that's coming out, or is out pushing dead. You've got to make sure, well, I'm going to let him talk about this in a second, but this is something that is like a must-see. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only... <laughs> Tom Brown, welcome to the show. <laughs> that was a nice, very nice introduction. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. How's your thanks, day been today? Thanks. Not bad. Thanks for having me on. I just got back from uh, seeing uh, uh, Pete's Dragon with my godson. So uh, ah. I cried for a while in a movie theater. We both cried. The tearjerker. You know, the, those Disney people, they love to make kids cry. Hey, that's how they make their money. (laughs) Yes, sir. That's how they do it. Disney has been doing big things. I mean, from the days when I was young, you know, we had the old school Mickey Mouse. And now this era gets the best of all worlds. So Yeah, it's the um, same stuff still happening. They tied up Dumbo's mom and made her cry, you know, whenever that was. (laughs) And they did the same thing with a a kid's dragon. And I had to suffer through that. It was good. And see, I've, but, and I've but heard it was. It was. I, I heard it was. I actually heard it. Um, I heard about it. My kids, they've seen it already. I didn't get a chance to see it, but I've heard it was a good movie. Um, yeah, the, the now, same folks actually did the sound design. There's a connection, too. The same folks did the sound design for Pete's Dragon um, that were that did the sound design for uh, for Pushing Dead, the, uh, the Skywalker wow. sound uh, team at yeah, really good, really good group of guys over there. I did not know that. I just learned something new, ladies and gentlemen. Wow! And the show I got is a just lot of, got a lot of information for you. <laughs> cool, cool. Now, Tom, just to let you know, on this show we do talk about how you started in your career, your success, give advice on how to get into your career, and much more. But we always start from the beginning. Now, when did you first realize that you wanted to go in or get into the movie industry? Uh, it wasn't so much that I wanted to get into the movie industry. I just started kind of making little movies because my dad had this really cool old crank um, eight millimeter camera that I found in the basement. We had a very dangerous, uh, murky, uh, moldy ba- basement, and I found this camera down there. And I just started shooting. I would, I would walk. Uh, I could walk to uh, a store, like a department store, where they. It was Woolworth, and I make, it makes me sound like I'm a really old man. But, but I would walk down to Woolworth, I'd buy some 8-millimeter uh, spools, and then I started uh, uh, making uh, films that way. So so it was more so that it just, I was just kind of drawn to it and, uh, and wanted to always like to tell a story, and then that seemed like a good way, celluloid seemed like a good way for me to tell to tell a story because then you, you tell it once and then you can just let the projector do it over and over again. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it just seemed like a fun, a fun thing to do. So 
I never, I don't think I ever really wanted to necessarily do this as a career. Um, and I'm not exactly doing it. <laughs> it's not like the money pouring in. But, um, but yeah, it's just always, I've always wanted to tell stories and this seems like a good way for me to do it. And see, that's a good thing, Tom, because when you start at a young age and you continue to do it, you're building your passion up for it at the same time. Now, I definitely understand what you said that you, you know, that wasn't your initial thing to say, I was going to get into the movie industry. But as right. a kid, you really started. And, I mean, you really went old school. I mean, finding the old tapes and everything and just recording right. things. And, and look where you are now. I mean, you're doing big things in this industry. And I just want to commend you from, you know, starting and keeping that interest going because if that interest would have stopped, and I mean permanently stop, we wouldn't have pushing dead. So I'm, well, thanks. I'm just happy yeah. that you're doing it. Yes. Thank you. you yeah, because it, 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 it's hard. It's a, <laughs> it's a tricky business. And it, it, it's uh, pushing dead is a good example of that. And uh, I I went from being like a, a crazy guy talking about his movie for uh, for uh, 16 years to a guy who, you know, went from crazy to tenacious, you know, like I had to, I like, I just kept working at it until I got the movie done. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, people realized, oh, he's, he's not, he's not just, he's not just nuts. He's, uh, he's actually (laughs) making it. So, uh, so yeah, it took, it took a long time. I wrote this, I mean, I, I continued to write stuff and make movies, but I wrote this way back in, at the at the end of 1999 for our, for this Rockefeller grant that somebody nominated me for, and then I got into the uh, Sundance Labs with it, and I thought the movie would take off right away, and uh, one thing led to another. It was set up a couple times, and then it collapsed, and it was set up, and it collapsed, and it, you just you you really have to be passionate about it, otherwise, uh, it, it, it's it's exhausting very exhausting mm-hmm. uh, business for, for most of us. And speaking about being an exhausting business, um, did you have any mentors, you know, to help guide you through this business to where you are today? I think, um, I think, uh, you know, for, for most people who are writing and directing, the most important thing is to write something that you love because the chances are you're going to be trying to, you know, sell that thing. You're going to, tr- you have to convince everybody, or maybe they just read it and they love it or whatever. But um, that's the most important thing because so often filmmakers, I know a lot of them, will write something to try to please uh, a, a larger audience. But really, to, to you know, I, I wrote something that you know, personally I love, but at the same time, I knew, I knew that if I knew that at least certain people would appreciate it. And that's really helpful to keep you going, to fuel you and keep you going. I have a, an episodic that I just wrote um, not long ago about my neighborhood called Tenderloin. And, and it's, you know, that's at the stage now where I'm in, where I'm, you know, going to start trying to get people interested in that. And if I ever have any doubts, I just go and I, I go back and I read the script again, and I'm like, oh, I love it. And then that fuels me to continue on. So, so that's the main thing is to kind of write is to write something that you uh, write something that you really love and something that you're passionate about. Nice, very nice. And I see that you're actually doing that. And ladies and gentlemen, that's listening worldwide, just to let you know, Tom is nowhere finished actually getting. I mean, finishing his career. I mean, he's doing big things, and he's going to continue. I really do have faith in that. So make sure you follow this guy. He is, I'm telling you, he's the real deal. Make sure you do that. Um, Now, when you was younger, I understand that you was actually, you know, you was taping yourself and everything, but I was taping different things to create and play around with the tapes. But did you um, have any movies that you really was fond of? that you enjoy watching when you was younger? I, I watched all those, like, um, I watched all those. I would stay up late and, and watch um, SNL when that, when SNL first started, because I was pretty young when that started. And, um, and so I was really into, like, all those Belushi and Aykroyd movies. Comedies were definitely, like, that's why 
stuff that I'm doing now, it's like it's it's always there's always a f- funny element, but um, it it might be a more serious topic, but it's there's always a comic kind of spin on it, and so mm-hmm. it was always the com- the comedies that I was drawn to because that you know it, it's also fun to make comedies because you can you you know if your movie's working when you go to see it with an audience and. And if it works, it's just, it's a kind of an amazing feeling to sit there and have people laugh at at your work. So, so yeah, it was it was stuff. You know, it was like Blues Brothers. It was when I was younger. It was like Blues Brothers. I saw that so many times. My friend uh, John Popper, who's who uh, people might know him from uh, Blues Traveler. He's a lead singer of that. And he and I were yeah. uh, childhood childhood friends, and we uh, we watched Blues Brothers like uh, at least a hundred times. And we were always Jake and Elwood for uh, for Halloween, so th- so that was a huge one. John Landis, uh, and then and then the you know Robert Altman movies and and oh, cool. uh, you know all those guys, John Candy. I loved all those those movies, even when they weren't good. I liked spending time with the actors, um, so so that was you know that's part of it. Like I I always loved Robin Williams, watching Robin Williams movies, even if I didn't like the movies, it just felt like. <laughs> You know, hanging out with Robin Williams was a was a good thing to do. He was, of uh, yeah, and uh, 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 he was in one of my producers' um, uh, pictures, uh, The Fisher King. One of my producers wrote The Fisher King, uh, the screenplay for it, and uh, I I had always hoped to work with Robin Williams just because I loved watching him, watching him on the screen. So. There are all these like elements that like I'm happy if I'm watching a movie if I can get anything out of it like if I like the actors or if I like the story I don't have to like everything about it um, I'd be right. satisfied if I can if I get one good laugh I'm, uh, it was worth it. Nice, nice. How was Robin Williams in in person? Um, I only with Robin Williams I only met Robin Williams one time. And it went, I didn't even meet him. I said hi to him. I was in a tiny little bike shop in in the lower okay. eight here in San Francisco, and um, and I wanted to tell him because I was a fan of his, and I wanted to tell him, hey, my producer wrote the Fisher King, <laughs> but at the same time he was with his son, and I wanted to leave him alone and let him have his own life because actor celebrities don't, you know, they they their 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 lives are so invaded by you know the people the people around them, the people, their fans. And so I, I didn't want to be that guy, but I kind of regret, I kind of regret it now. Um, but uh, yeah, so I didn't know my producer knew him pretty well um, uh, on that project, but um, uh, I've heard only like really wonderful things about him. Yes. Yes. Rest in peace, Robin. Um, yeah. And you know, and, and that's the thing, you know, and the good thing is you say that you regret that you didn't say something to him, but you know what? At the same time, Tom, you shouldn't regret that because at the same time, you probably made his day for that. You know, he could have thought that, oh, this is another groupie or this is another person <laughs> trying to right. swarm me. And even though you just want to say, hey, you know, I know this person is connected to you and, you know, I'm affiliated. So I get where you're right. coming from. And, yeah. you know, and, and that's the thing. A lot of people want to take those chances and sometimes it works well and sometimes it can be a bust. But right, the thing right. is you have to beat them and you, nobody can't take that away from you. <laughs> yeah, I always like whenever I, I mean, I I have been in a situation because of Sundance, they, they expose you, which is really helpful that they expose you to a lot of uh, celebrities. You know, you do you you hang out in the mountains of Utah and you workshop your movies there if you get into the Sundance Lab. And you meet the celebrities there and you meet the celebrities at the film festival and so you're exposed to that so you realize how, you know, how really just, you know, we're, we're all just human beings trying to, like, figure this whole thing out. And, uh, and that's really helpful. It's really helpful. It was really helpful to have that experience and then, to work with Danny Glover because he's, you know, to me an icon and, uh, and, you know, that's a, it's an intimidating thing to direct somebody who has such a great career and such a, an amazing actor. And um, uh, so, yeah, Sundance is really helpful for that because they do expose you to all those, all those actors and, uh, you know, just having an opportunity to have met a lot of people. I always want to just tell people, 
like, uh, you know, with, um, I met with Whoopi Goldberg one time and we were, and I just wanted to tell her like the most important thing for me to want to tell somebody that I love on screen is what you're doing is really incredible. Even if it's just for like a comedy, like what you're doing is, is really great for the world. Like especially people who are doing comedy stuff and um, people who are engaging other people because we use it to escape and it's, it's, you know, it's a really, I, I need to escape all the time, you know, and I, I'll flip on a right. comedy. And and, um, and so those people are doing great work, and sometimes they forget it. So I always like to remind people if I do have the opportunity, um, that's what people people uh, people were telling me in the labs um, quite a bit is, is you know, this, this movie is both a comedy, which is very important for, like, humans to have, like, humor and escape, but it's also a movie mm-hmm. that about – about something it's like you know it's it's about um it's about the flawed healthcare system it's about it's about people coping and dealing with you know big issues and um but it should be even though this is this is one guy who's dealing with AIDS this you should be able to replace that crap that he's dealing with with whatever crap you're dealing with in your life and kind of get right. something out of it um, that's what I'm hoping right and ladies and gentlemen, we're going to actually talk more about Pushing Dead in a minute, but I do have to ask this question to Tom because I want to know personally myself his answer off of this. Now, <laughs> do you feel that the movie industry have changed for the better or the worse within the last 20 years? Um, I think it, it changed dramatically, and it, there are, there are, um, there's an upside and a downside to where it is now. It's easy. It's, easier to make a movie because you're not just celluloid was kind of the only way to do it before. And that was incredibly expensive. And, um, but it's really hard to get a movie finance now. So it, it's, it's a, it's a very, it's a very different thing. It's like more people have the ability to make movies now. So there are more mm-hmm. of them out there. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I don't know. It's a tricky, it's a really tricky question because it, it, you can now you can make a movie for you know a hundred grand if you really if you really want to and and before you know before for an indie movie um, it was it was pretty tricky to make to make all those low budget movies that were successful and got a lot of press did it because it was really hard to make a movie on celluloid um, for so little but now that we're you know most filmmakers are shooting digitally most of us have not everybody um uh it, it it's a lot it is it is a little bit um it is a little bit easier but it's but at the same time it's harder it's harder to get financing now than it was when i when i wrote the movie so so it's a little bit of both it's kind of i guess it's kind of uh it, it's it's neither um better or worse it's just it's just very different and even the way uh the distribution now is like so different and uh and even film festivals now when i used to um do film festivals you you ordered eight film cans of your you know your short film or whatever and then you you know send those around to film festivals and now if you have a short film um you know you're just you just drop box it to somebody um and when you submit to a festival, you just have to send out press kits and, and submission mm-hmm. forms and do all that. And now it's just like shopping on Amazon. You know, you're like, I'll do this festival. <laughs> you, it, it's kind of great. I mean, that part of it I love. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot easier now. Um, so, you know, that, that side of it, like how films are dist- distributed and um, that you can reach a much wider audience with, streaming so so I, I would say it i would say now i'm gonna retract my earlier answer and say that it's better now because people can reach a wider audience um it's a little easier for everybody to um reach a wider audience and that's really what it's all about you know that's what you're hoping to do is just share your story um with as many people as possible at least that's what that's what i'm hoping to do nice now, you mentioned this in your answer, so I'm going to have to bring it back up. Um, and we'll have to be in the form of a question with this. Now, um, how excited were you 
when you you know when your films was actually screened in over one hundred different festivals, including Sunday. Yeah, I think. How exciting. Yeah, um, uh, it, it's pretty great. You know, it is. It's that. It's that. Um, it's that feeling of. Uh, well, it's really nice when so many film festivals uh, want to screen your movie, and then it's really nice to go to them and have the audiences respond. Sundance, my first screening at Sundance, I remember I like I was a little nervous about that one, and I think I took t- too many, like one too many anxiety pills, so I don't really remember. <laughs> but, you know, I kind of slept through that screening, but um, uh, but Sundance was was pretty cool. Uh, the we had a we had a screening at Sundance once and the the projector was eating up everybody's films and uh, I happen to have a, some I always have I'm um, uh, I have a lot of backups I always like I I travel with film prints or or digital copies of the the movie or whatever and so I had like at that time it was this was way back in. Uh, maybe 1997 and I had some VHS tapes in my bag of the movie and that theater actually wow. was equipped uh, to, and we had an incredible screening at Sundance uh, with a VHS, <laughs> with a VHS <laughs> tape. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's festivals are, are kind of amazing. And, and I tried to go to as many of them and I'm trying to go to as many we have, we're sitting on a, if people, if people uh, want to follow us on Twitter, please do, um, because we're going to be releasing a lot of festival information very soon. We have, we're have, we sitting on a whole lot of uh, very kind uh, people have accepted us into their film festival, but we they make you keep it a secret until they announce. So we have a mm-hmm. whole bunch of uh, film festivals coming up um, around... Uh, around the country and also uh, some international. So uh, if people uh, stay tuned on Twitter or Facebook, um, we will continually update as soon as the festival's released today. Uh, San Diego International uh, announced us, so we don't have to keep that a secret anymore. So we'll be screening with them uh, nice. uh, later later this month, or September actually, the end of September. Um so yeah, so festivals are, are are really pretty amazing, and and usually the audiences are are film, you know, they're film lovers, and they're there, uh, mm-hmm. you know, to support film. So it, the audiences don't get much more generous than uh, than film festivals. So I I love them, and uh, you know, and, and if you uh, I, I'm learning there's a big difference when you're when you make a short film and do a film festival, and you make a feature film and you do film festivals, that there are a lot more perks if you make a feature. <laughs> I knew that before. Oh, yeah. but, you know, when, when you do shorts, you know, it's up to you to kind of get yourself around to these festivals, and when you make a feature, people are much more likely to bring you around to the festival, so that's nice. Wow. I did not know that. Um, I've actually been in two shorts and getting ready for my third film soon. Um, and the thing is, I see where people... You know, when they first start in this industry, it's hard to right. get people's attention because I know the uh, filmmaker and director and producer of what I was in called the Wicked series. Um, right. You know, he was screaming. He was screaming loud, like, "Look at me! Look at my stuff! I'm good at what I do!" And he really right. is. And it's just, it seems like if you don't have that feature, like you said, it, it's kind of harder. It's like it's harder to get noticed. You have to know, you know how they say you have to know people in the industry. And right. I do believe that. Um, but I believe also at the same time, your talent will talk. So yeah, it's yeah. just getting that person, getting that right person to see your stuff, to actually get you launched. Yeah, in. yeah and that, that's definitely that like be part. My, yeah, that would be my, my advice to somebody who wants to be a filmmaker is actually to start by making a really – you know, amazing short film, you know, that's easier said than done, but just make the best short film you can and then try, Mm -hmm. you know, try to get that into, you know, some of these top tier film festivals, try to get it recognized, try to get it reviewed. um, And, you know, keep making short films because if you, if you're, 
you know, I like to believe that if you're good at it, that people people will actually pay attention. And that's that's how I did it. You know, I it took me a long time to get there because I was self-taught and, you know, I didn't go to film school and I dropped out of high school. And, right. um, uh, you know, it just took me a while. I, I taught myself um, and I'm sure that I would have benefited from some kind of film class. But at, at the same time, I ended up with, um, I think, you know, a very... Um, uh, you know, uh, just a different, my own way of telling a story uh, uh, on film that I probably would not have gotten to um, had I taken a, you know, film school route, like a traditional film school route. But yeah, make the short films and, and get them to f- festivals and get recognized. And, and um, that is a great way to, you know, people don't like to take risks in the movie industry. So it's really hard to get a feature film made. And if, if you haven't at the very least made um, some short films that people can see and, and appreciate, then it's going to be really tricky to get somebody unless, unless you're just rich, because then, then it's really easy. <laughs> and it's really That's easy true. To make a movie. <laughs> very true. Now, you we've heard about you being at the festivals and everything. Now, what other platforms have, um, your movies actually appeared on, you know, like television. Yeah. Um, how... um, mm-hmm. Yeah. We've, we've, we've done, we've done kind of, I guess a little bit of everything. I mean, we, we had, uh, you know, year, years ago back when like the internet was brand new. <laughs> um, I had one of the first, I had, I guess I had the first short film on ISC broadband, like when they started doing internet streaming um, I had the very first short film on, on IFC broadband and, um, and even on, I had the first short, I had the first, uh, short film on some, uh, some like crappy airline, <laughs> although I, you know, I appreciate the airline and I love them very much, oh, but yeah. it was some like some low budget airline. I had like the first, uh, short film on the airline. So I would go for any kind of, you know, distribution that I could. And then um, we were, we have had stuff on uh, PBS and uh, Bravo used to be a very different uh, channel than it is now. And, and TLC, uh, which is now a kind of, you know, I don't know exactly how, how to describe it now, but it, that used to be very different too. And we had, um, we had stuff on there years ago, um, the independent film channel. We had stuff on, uh, there and, uh, and then we've even done stuff, you know, and then we've done stuff like in museums, like weird, you know, great weird, uh, screenings at the American museum of natural history. I was in part of, a an exhibit wow. that had to do with, um, uh, um, diseases, uh, so okay. they, you know, screen, screen some of my AIDS comedies, you know, for this, uh, as part of this series that they were doing. So yeah, uh-huh. kind of a little, little bit of everything. I mean, I've screened in barns, you know, as part of art shows and, and, uh, uh, at the Guggenheim we've had screenings and yeah. So a little bit of everything. Nice. Tom, it seems like, man, you've been all over, man. And that's a good thing because, that's one way how to actually grow your audience by putting your your work. I'm not going to just say, even though Thomas a filmmaker, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm speaking, even if you're outside of the movie industry, if you're in the music industry, or even if you just do art or whatever, when you spread your work around, instead of just going in one tunnel, you know, you can actually build your fan base quicker that way too, because it'll actually right. be a spoke for people also. So anybody that's listening worldwide right now, Get your stuff out there. If you're just walking into this industry um, or any industry, get your work out there. It doesn't have to just be straight festivals. Festivals are great. But, I mean, right. think about like Tom did. I mean, airlines, museums, anything that will take your work yep. and will actually use it, let them use it for the good. Seriously, let them use it for the good. Now, Tom, tell everybody about Trade Man's Exit. Uh, that's a short film that's kind of, I mean, we, um, I did that with a couple of guys that I did this, um, feature film with, and we were kind of, part of it was just, I was getting to know some of the crew and we were kind of, uh, getting the, you know, the, our brains 
uh, in motion before the feature. And we had, um, we had really just finished that and started doing some festivals. We kicked that one off at the, here in San Francisco at the San Francisco International Film Festival. And then we laid off the film festivals for a while because we got into prep um, with the feature film. Uh, but Trades and Zeta is it's still actually playing the festivals. Um, we have a, a couple more film festivals that that'll screen at, and it's it's about it's a weird little uh, uh, story about somebody who's going to great lengths to get some closure in their life, and um, and uh, I I actually play the lead in that, and it. <laughs> Um, which is wow. something that I have done on occasion, uh, just because sometimes it's easier, um, mm-hmm. especially when we shot that. We, it's a 12-minute uh, short film and a very handsome-looking movie because we had a, a, a really great uh, uh, director of photography, Fraser Bradshaw. He shot the feature. And uh, he and I work really well together, and we work, we work very quickly together. Um, but we like to have very, like, mellow set everybody gets along um that's what we strive for everybody's kind to everybody else and uh oh yeah but we like them oh sorry go ahead oh no i was just saying oh yeah that's very true oh you... yeah 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 we try we, yep. i mean that's it's so important that everybody everybody gets along um and it doesn't always work like we you know it did it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't uh perfection all the way through um with you know we had we did have a few little hiccups here and there but for the most part you know we worked very hard to make sure that that everybody was happy and that's another really important thing for people to be reminded of is if especially if you're going to be a a director uh you you really have to be uh kind to people you you really have to uh um you know it's helpful if you're if you're just naturally a kind person <laughs> it's really helpful and if you're good if you're good under pressure and um uh you know you, you never want to have a situation where where you you're anybody is yelling at anybody on a on a movie set unfortunately um uh you know the the couple of times that i saw that happening i i was able i was able to stop that um uh, so i think i think for the most part we had a very harmonious shoot with with pushing dead and and um, I think everybody had a pretty you know everybody on our crew had a pretty good time, but yeah, trade tradesman's exit was the same kind of thing. But it was it was we had only uh, about a day. We shot the bulk of it in a day, and then the the, the following day we shot for a couple of hours. Um, so to shoot you know a, a twelve minute short um, in about a day and a half that that's pretty tricky, especially. Um, uh, with the production values that we were going for, um, it's pretty tricky to move that fast. But um, but I think it was uh, successful. I mean, I like it. I like the short, and I don't cringe too much when I see myself in it. So I think <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, that's always a good sign, you know. If I'm not, if I haven't, you know, if I don't feel I've made an ass out of myself, like that's a good sign. And uh, so yeah, so. Uh, I, People will. Uh, I, I'll, I'll probably put some stuff on social media too, where people can find that, um, good, find that good. short short film in the next couple of months because it will still be sticking around and playing a f- couple of festivals. Everybody, look for it when he releases it. Look for this once again. It's called Trade Man's Exit. Now, what everybody worldwide is ready to hear about, and now it's time to talk about it now. So, Tom, how did you come up with? Pushing Dead, and how excited uh, were you, you know, to get the cast in this certain cast in the movie? Yeah, I mean, well, you know, it's the cast thing is kind of crazy. It's like you know, you you write something, and I I like to write with actors in mind, so I'll always pick some of my favorite actors and and cast them. You know, when I after I write the first couple of pages. So it makes it a little mm-hmm. easier for me to see them maneuvering through the through the screenplay if I cast it in my head. And um, uh, so, yeah, you know, just I've I've been a huge Danny Glover fan forever uh, since I think 
I guess it was probably Silverado. I remember riding my bike to the movie theater to see Silverado. Oh, wow. I just remember, I just remember Danny Glover, like, standing out in that movie as being, like, you know, a really amazing actor. And um, uh, so, yeah, it's a little weird. It's a little surreal when, when he says yes, like, yeah, I'll do your movie. And it's even, you know, it's even more bizarre when you're, like, you know, you guys are hanging out, having lunch, sitting back on the couch, and, you know, Danny's telling you stories about his career, and you know it's pretty, it's pretty, it's a pretty amazing thing. And then I, I feel very lucky to get um, to have landed with, uh, um, ended up with James Roday um, mm-hmm. playing uh, the lead character. And I didn't really know that much about him. I had seen a little bit of Psych, uh, his show that he was on for eight seasons, I think, and. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I watched, I watched a little more and I, I immediately said, this guy is, is the, this is the guy, you know, he just felt completely <laughs> right to me. And, and he was, uh, he kept telling me, he's like, I don't know what you're, I don't know what's wrong with you and why you picked me, <laughs> why you picked me for this role. <laughs> you're a crazy man. You know, what's wrong with you? Um, uh, he would turn to me and say that while we were shooting, uh, but wow. I think he knew that he, I think he knew that he was, I think he knew he, I was, I couldn't have been happier with the work that James was doing. He was really, really, he's really, really good in this movie. And then Robin Weigert, um, uh, we had had somebody cast in, in Robin's part for a very long time. Um, and, uh, one of my childhood heroes and I, I, they ended up with a TV show. So, um, after I watched, you know, a couple of episodes of Deadwood and, and saw Robin Weigert as Calamity Jane in Deadwood, I, I, I couldn't believe, you know, she's so remarkable in Deadwood. I said, if, you know, if anything should happen with my other actor, I would love for Robin to part of Paula in Pushing Dead. And then that, oddly enough, ended up happening. And, um, and also Candy Alexander is really remarkable and uh, super sweet. Everybody was really, uh, you know, everybody was very different. Everybody had a very different way of working. Everybody had a very different personality, um, especially with, with, with the, the five kind of main actors. They were all so different and all had very different uh, methods of acting. That's what you have to figure out as a director. You have to figure out, you know who who goes first? Um, right. You know, who, who's the who's the camera on first? Who's gonna, you know, who's better at, at who who prefers a few takes before you turn the camera on them and all that stuff. And it was pretty easy to figure out only because everybody was so different that it made it so much easier for me to kind of strategize my plan as, you know, the guy who's responsible for getting coverage, you know, with my director of photography and, and, and planning that attack, like it made it a little easier for me, but yeah, I felt incredibly, incredibly lucky to have, uh, this cast. And I hope that I get a chance to work with, uh, all of them again, um, at some point, I already have a project that I'm, that I've written that I want to have some of them involved. in. so, um, so yeah, really, really lucky. And then, uh, uh, and then, the, and Pushing Dead just came about because I was writing about my own fears. You know, I've been uh, positive since, uh, you know, way back, uh, like 31 years. And mm-hmm. and just, uh, you know, what if something happens to my uh, prescriptions, my medication? Like, what if I had to go without my medication because I'm on something they call uh, salvage therapy? Even though I'm, like, super-duper healthy uh, on paper, you know, uh, uh, you know, my, uh, I've been on a lot of medication over the years. So, so with somebody who has very few options, if the government, you know, if, if, if your insurance or, or low income folks who, who are getting government assistance, um, you know, if something happens and they can't get their medicine that month, um, that's what, that's what started me writing, um, this particular script was just writing about those fears and like, how would I get around that? And what would I do? And uh, so that's, that's where it really all, all started. And, 
things have definitely gotten better. I mean, I was super happy to hear about the Affordable Care Act and the, that that was um, that that was uh, going to become reality. Unfortunately, the low income side of things has improved, but not improved enough that um, you know this movie still makes a lot of sense and needs to be seen so that people realize how how screwy the the bureaucracy is and and how challenging it is for people, especially the people who don't ask a lot of questions, because that's that's what I was writing this movie. Um, about is a guy who he's not somebody who's fighting the system. He's he's somebody who's just stuck in there, and he doesn't like to right. make waves. And he he doesn't he's not going to ask a lot of the questions. Wow, Tom, I can I'm ramble not on forever. Lie. If you want me, to. <laughs> oh, this this is your time, Tom. This is your time, <laughs> Tom, and. Believe it or not, man, this is something that everybody needs to see, Pushing Dead. I mean, this is a genuine movie. It really is. And you actually have a movie that has a subject line to it, a topic. So that's that's one thing that you can't beat when you find a good movie that actually has a, a topic that people can relate to that actually knows about it. So, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you do go see Pushing Dead. Um, Tom, how can people find you on social media? Uh, we are uh, Pushing Dead Film uh, on Twitter. We are, uh, let's see if I can remember these. Um, we are on Facebook. Uh, what are we? I, I think we're just Pushing Dead on Facebook. People will find us. Um, and then on um, uh, Instagram, I believe we're Pushing Dead the Movie. And okay. if they uh, if they go – actually, here's the easiest thing to do. If you go to pushingdead.com, there are uh, links to all of our social media, uh, all of the social media sites. So um, uh, I think we tend to kind of update, update our Twitter uh, the most often, and so uh, that's typically where uh, the film festival news will be popping up first. Um, but but we also try to we also try to be active on on uh, Facebook as well. But uh, but yeah, like I say, people all around the uh, country and and uh, and also internationally um, uh, should keep an eye out because we are we do have quite a few festivals lined up uh, for the very near future. Everybody, make sure. And I can't say this enough. Make sure that you go find Tom, find Pushing Dead on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Keep up with Tom. I'm telling you, he has more to come, guys. Make sure you go watch Pushing Dead. Make sure you keep up with everything he's coming out with because I'm telling you, this is an incredible career that you're actually witnessing and you're hearing about right now. So make sure you do it. Go tell your family, tell your friends, tell your associates, tell your haters. Let them watch it too. <laughs> Make sure you get it yeah. out there. You know, definitely. <laughs> definitely. And get on Twitter there because and follow me on Twitter because I it's really sad. I think I only have you know sixty followers or something. So 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 follow me so that I don't look you know so bad uh, on there. <laughs> Everybody I follow that I count Tom. Up in, please <laughs> yeah, please please do, please do. It's a sad <laughs> thing. <laughs> That's okay. It's, I think that's one of the whole I think that's one of the new mysteries of Earth is how to grow your social media fans. And because <laughs> with me, I'm a eighties baby. So I didn't grow up in social media. And right. you know, that's like one of the mysteries. It is it's crazy that a ten or twelve year old know how to get hundreds of thousands of followers <laughs> and I'm thirty six. And I'm I'm trying to knock on some of these like how do you how do you do it? And they be like, well, only thing you have to do is this this and this, and then you try it yourself and it don't work. And it makes me scratch my head more. So I, I know how you feel, Tom. Um, now, Tom, what is your what is your ultimate goal in the movie industry? Uh, I don't really have one. I just want to I just want to keep. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that people will allow me uh, to, <laughs> and by that I mean. Um, I can't personally finance uh, these movies by myself, 
So I'm, I'm hoping that we, we continue to find people who are willing to, you know, uh, help out and, and invest in uh, my stories that I'm trying to tell. So really that's it. I just want to keep telling stories and um, keep working with, uh, with, really, uh, with really great, talented, um, uh, kind people. Uh, that these are, you know, these are my goals. I, I also want to keep, keep, uh, you know, I don't want to get too sucked into the in, into the industry that I that I don't have have time for family and friends. So I always try to to make time for that, and and that's that's really hard to do um, for people who are just who who are really concentrated on just kind of moving ahead in the in the industry. Um, so. So I want a little bit of everything. I want to just keep telling stories, you know, keep telling goofy stories. And um, and it, it is a real challenge. It is a real challenge. Um, but I imagine that Pushing Dead will be uh, something that is, is hel- a helpful tool for me because it really is, it really is true that people, uh, people don't like to take risks on filmmakers who, um, at least with other feature films, or maybe in the case of an, uh, doing an episodic, uh, doing a series. Right. Um, people don't like to take a risk if you if you don't have a a feature film under your belt. So now people can and look at my feature film and I hope say, oh wow, that guy knows what he's doing, and not not be afraid to you know put their money into a project uh, 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 that I'm doing, which is, is something that you know regardless of how many short films uh, you've made. People, uh, that's still a big issue because you're you're considered a first time, you know, you're a first time feature filmmaker, and and that's a, a risk that most people aren't willing to invest in. So um, yeah, so, so for me, I just want to keep telling stories. Uh, hope hope that um, people like them, <laughs> uh, and uh, and and hope that uh, hope that they get distributed to a to a large audience. So. Uh, I'm, I'm nice. working now to I'm working now with my producers to 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 try to achieve that. So we'll see. Okay. And I believe it will work for you. Now, um, Tom, for the people that tuned in late to the show, um, you gave your advice earlier, but do you mind just breaking down one more time uh, what advice that you'll give any male or female that wants to become a filmmaker, a writer, or even a director in the movie industry? Yeah, I would say. Um, uh, the most important thing is to is to really be yourself, and 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 to to truly be, you know, kind, and treat everybody with respect, and surround yourself with talented people. And if you if you haven't done this before and you're directing your first short film, then surround yourself with people who who you can learn from. Surround your I mean, you know, there's no way that I. I you know, I do not know how to do a lot of things, um, and uh, you know, I I I will. I'm the first to admit that I don't know how to do certain things, and 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 that's helpful if you're a director and and you know you you want people to have complete faith in you, um, but you 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 also want to um, admit when you don't know how to do something and and ask somebody the best uh, way to do that. So surround yourself with really talented folks. Um, and then um, be yourself, and that means if you're the writer, be yourself and don't try to write for other people. But don't try to write for just yourself either, because I don't believe those filmmakers. There are filmmakers out there who say, I don't care what people think. Like, you know, I, th- I did what I, the movie I want. Everybody cares, you know, what people think. Of course you want people to like your story. That's why you made it, you know. Otherwise, you wouldn't make a movie. You know, you you you'd sit around, and make videos, and and play them back for yourself. So, so you want you know you want everybody to like it. So, um, but but try to you know keep your voice, keep 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 whatever voice it is that that you have. Try to keep that present in in your project. And for me, it's it's you know I just put down on paper what I think will be entertaining, and um, and that translates. Uh, in, into something that you know is, is has a has its own kind of look and feel and tempo and tone to it. So um, 
So that would be kind of my biggest advice is just just to make sure that you're you're kind of writing stuff that you you appreciate. That's really important because a lot of people aren't doing that. A lot of people are writing things things that they think other people will will uh, enjoy. And um, uh, and then to to uh, just keep working towards it. If you believe in something, just keep working towards it. You know, I haven't heard anybody. I just you know, I'm sure there have been some projects that have been around longer than uh, 16 years before they got made. But it's a that's a really long, <laughs> that's a really long yeah. time. It's, it's it really hard. Time. You really have to yeah. You have to believe. You have to believe in in whatever it is that. Um, whatever the project is, you really have to believe in it, or or you'll just you know you'll just collapse. <laughs> you'll just collapse nice. from from exhaustion. Nice, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure once again you do go find Tom on um, social media. Check out Pushing Dead. Check out all of his work that he's doing, guys. And he's going to release some more soon. Make sure you check him out on Twitter. That's where he updates the most. So when he have upcoming events coming up. Um, like the film festivals and everything, you will know where he's at, guys. Make sure you stay tuned to him. Follow him, guys. Make sure you do it. Now, Tom, I know you're a busy guy, man, and I want to say thank you. Thank you a thousand times for coming on the show today. And I oh, would no, love it's... to have you back in the future. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, uh, I'd be happy to. When we get done with this, I'll I'll tell you about film festival adventures. Uh, when cool. we're done, and uh, and hopefully we pick up, uh, we get some distrib- distribution in place soon, and and this this movie gets out to more people. But yeah, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, Tom Brown. Make sure you follow him once again, and everybody have a great night. And until next time, on the business. <laughs>